Um, oh, Eleanor, well, I was, I was Eleanor Rigby. Really little. Um, I lived on what we call a housing estate, uh, which is like the project. Paul McCartney, Mr. GQ man. We'll get to him later. But uh, mostly, we're going to focus on other fake made up histories. And uh, we're going to see a 1929 film or series of clips. They call it the Quarter Century Club, so older than 75. Well, it's interesting that they would focus on that because it gets into this pre-1850 where it seems in my recent research that anything before 18 50 gets really sketchy and the people around at that time were either orphan children or controllers pretty much and if you look at people's family histories um, if they if they didn't migrate um, their own family history gets sketchy when you go back p past 1850 um, the artifacts are few and far between, and the buildings seem to be um, built for giants and unoccupied around all over the world. There were a lot of old ladies, and I enjoyed sitting around with these older ladies. Just as whoever that is, playing Paul McCartney, makes up stories about the past, uh, as first-hand accounts that get repeated over and over but are not any more true. The same goes for the fake history that was made up in the mid to late 1800s especially. Especially getting to the mid 1800s when ostensibly most of the elderly people speaking in 1929 in these series of interviews lived out their early years. In fact, I contend that many of the people in the interviews are not even the age they claim to be. Very, very few adults are to be found in the early photos from 1850, 1860. The cities were empty. They were completely built up with huge buildings for giants. And these people are trying to cover it up. And they tell you tales and stories and they lie about almost everything, gender, their own gender, their age, and uh, many, many other aspects. It's very, very interesting. We've caught them here because we've done the research. We know, haven't we? Uh, I've done the research for myself. I know the very things that the research community is questioning, uh, the very small group of us so-called mud flutters, um, were the very things we're questioning in these interviews, they contend, and not very convincingly so, I might add. Take a look. There were a lot of old ladies, and I enjoyed sitting around with these older ladies. Yeah, so we'll get to that story. Hey, what can I say to you? He wants me to talk to you. Oh, anything, anything. How old man are you? 82. Sunglasses? Oh, I got that um, when I was a young fellow, about 15 years old, and I've had it ever since. <laughs> so how old is he? <laughs> 110. Bull oh, crap. In the sun. In the sun. That's no lady. That's the White Gloves Club there. That's no This lead. is the first octogenarian club organized in Florida. We have with us today 70 members that are from 80 to 95 years of age. I am 84 myself. In 1861, I enlisted in the War of the Rebellion. Now, these guys are going to tell you <clears throat> how old they are, which I don't buy it. They don't look that old. You know, some people in, in their 50s or 60s can look... 70, 80, but 90, I guess. But these guys don't even look 80, 90. They're going to tell you they are. 
and they're going to tell you how wonderful war is, how they wish they could have died. Only seven of our men with more than 250 of the Dutch killed. No prisoners are taken on either side. That's savage. From there, we went to Springfield, Missouri, where we had the Battle of Wilson Creek, where General Lyon was killed on the 10th of August. The bravest man I ever saw, after he was completely surrounded and pulled off of his horse. How'd you see that? He picked up rocks and fought with thousands of men around him. He struck Will Morgan in the face with a rock, and John Morgan shot him with an old-fashioned horse pistol, killing him. Wonderful. How old are you? I'm 94. 94. Oh, crap. Pretty good age for a young man. <laughs> Pretty good age for a young man. <laughs> They're going to do a little secret handshake later. The Freemasonic handshake, but first they have to be given American flags, the flag they no, fought. Right. Well, how old are you? 84. 84. You was in the same, the same war. So they're handed flags as they talk about fighting, dying, wishing they could die for this Confederate flag. They're handed the Union flag. <laughs> same general. I'm the same general. Good man. Good man he was. Yes, he, he was, was never old. He there. died. To stay. There's a... We didn't enlist for a month or a year, but we enlisted for the war. As long as we lived or as long as the war lasted. That's right. Would you recommend that? Oh, my. So they're holding the flag of northern aggression that defeated them, and they're talking about how wonderful it was, how they enlisted to... To, to die or that until the war was won where they lost. So what are they doing there? Apparently nobody learned how to play instruments. I think that's the Beverly Hillbillies lady. She went to California from Texas. Happy, happy birthday. Many happy years to you, Grandma. Sounds Mom, this fake. Is a 100th birthday. Oh, it's certainly she wonderful. She doesn't look 100. Are you feeling fit for a waltz, are you? Fine, no answer. Let's waltz. Fine. <laughs> let's waltz. You're 100, but you can quick step. Bull crap, she's not a hundred. Not buying it. Golf clap. Thank you. Just dump her back in the chair and scene's over. I have known Broadway for over 50 years. I was a was he, like 50 years old? Employed in the office of a new illustrated evening paper. It was a sensation. Pictures of events of the day were printed at least two days after they happened. Nowadays, the illustrated papers print news sometimes a day before they occur. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, the famous Wellick Theater Mola. was established at 13th Street and Broadway. Now, one of the greatest developments in the history of Broadway is this famous newsreel theater. Here, the audible I mean, events. He of told the day you that they did fake news the day before it happens, the world when they screw are up. pictured for the education and the amusement of the entire community. Indoctrination. The most remarkable comprehensive and intelligent achievement the, the final outcome in the history of moving pictures yeah by their god Moloch Mr. Cole what kind of parents did you Wh have which guy's 103 father, the guy on the left or on the right my grandmother and mother. mother what kind of an environment was you raised in well 
I I lived with my father in different places where he was preaching and tried to be a boy. How much of an education did you have? Public school in the different towns, academy and seminary. What habits have you formed? I never drank anything. <laughs> Just and I dehydrated. Never don't smoke. No shoe. I haven't any bad habits. Doesn't smoke mushrooms. What kind of a world would you have if you could <laughs> have it the way you want it? <laughs> have people honest with each other. Yeah. My soul. Me too. Right. There's a free Mason that can shake. You take the and have it the way you want it. <laughs> have people honest with each other. Yeah. My soul. Me too. Right. There's a free Mason that can shake. You take the Classic Freemason handshake. And then look at this glitch here. What the heck's going on there with this? We'll find out, won't we? When she starts jibber jabbering. Any second now. There. How you feel? Good this morning? Hope you yeah. Do. I'm trying to get on I'm my glad. feet again. Feel pretty good. Good. Thankful it's as well as it is. Well, and thank I you. want to tell you that I'm living on the same ground that I've lived on for 75 long years when I come here as an 18-year-old bride. Howdy. I went to Washington 50 years and a little more ago. Wait, you just I said you were there the for 75 years. I've been with the presidents. And, uh, I learned a great many things up there that uh, I didn't know before. I'll add a little more to it. I was one of the board of lady managers for the Chicago Exposition. So they and I served my full time in, in Chicago and learned a good many things over there. But this is I before been, women's uh, suffrage. I was a delegate to the Tennessee Centennial Exposition. I uh -huh. was a delegate to St. Louis, a, a juror at St. Louis. Know. I think for a North Georgia cracker of my size and age, I've had a pretty good education on that line. That do all right. I was a three-year-old girl when the Indians were moved from this country to Indian territory. Well, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound so bad. I have an indistinct recollection of seeing the red men as they went through the woods for everything was woods nearly at that time. I have a, a, a distinct Where? impression if a three-year-old child can have it. Nope. Nevertheless, I've been here since that time and I've seen the march of progress all the way. Tale of tears. At, my t at that time, there were, we had only stagecoaches and we sure. only had horses and buggies. No electric and we had trains, lots huh? Of back travelers. Now I've seen it come along all this way. And the airplane goes over this over my house going on its way. And it's got to be such a common thing. The old girl don't go even out to see if she can look at it. <laughs> what about airships? So, okay, so sh she was supposedly a senator. <laughs> um and she had high positions in Washington, and then she worked in all these uh, expos. Well, the expos need exposed because they just covered up and hid the already somewhat exposed architecture and technology by putting it in your face and then taking it away from you one way or another. So she admits to being a part of this, um, acts like it isn't something bad, acts like it's something good. She does, doesn't lie about some things. She's lying about everything. In fact, all these people being interviewed are lying about everything except one, maybe. So let's take, for instance, the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. And as you can see, they had electric lighting there, and it was a spectacular thing. Now, we're told, the kids are taught, that this architecture is only a facade over cheap uh, wood and it 
burned down, as do all of them. But I say, that's fake news. Uh, they had it in secret. The fairgrounds weren't open to the public in, until 1893, and they only had begun in, I think, 1892, working under extremely tight deadlines, doing what? Building, no, whitewashing existing buildings, in my opinion, because that's all they talk about is the whitewashing. And then they had, they, it's an expo. They expose. The, it's the exposed technology, like this locomotive that still runs ran in the 1980s, and it was built in the 1830s or 1820s. And it rode on a granite railway while the wood had been compressed to granite because it was antediluvian. That's my opinion. Uh, because they had they say that they replaced wood with granite and then switched back. That's bullcrap. I'm learning that all these cities had moving walkways. Now, a lot of the stuff for the World's Fairs gets dismantled and then built into the place of the World's Fair before it gets dismantled or destroyed or burned again, somehow burned. Um, but uh, many of the buildings were uh, supposedly rebuilt with permanent materials elsewhere. Bull crap. Those buildings were genuine, and they were, they were just whitewashed to look new. It's just clear. So in her time, they had plenty of mud flutters to uh, do the world's fairs around and then blow them up. But nowadays, they just kind of throw the flat earth and the dome firmament out there as a mockery. And just one more thing about this. I'm discovering more and more about these moving walkways. Um, I thought there was one like this, which carried luggage for arriving passengers that I saw in the... Um, basically, you know, petrified in the mud rock of uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, and it seemed to be at an airport, like where airships would land, because it was at a higher elevation. They had all these tunnels and things uh, for luggage is what it seemed like. But I learned about in New York, they had a moving walkway. I think it had five tiers. And so you could just get on one tier and you step from one to the next to the next. And by the time you get to the fifth one, that's the fastest moving one. And you could move your, it would move your butt down Manhattan. You could be on a horse. You could be carrying, you know, a hand cart or just walking, maybe on a bicycle of some sort, you know, uh, whatever they had. And, uh, you know, your horse would be going 50 miles an hour. Because the con the conveyor was going like 40 by, you know, it's like about 10 miles an hour faster. I don't know, maybe not that extreme, but it's ingenious. And they had it in place and it was all built. And they say it was never used. They say it was built, but it was never used. There's stuff like this all over. And these people lie about it. They're liars. They are a liar. Speaking of which... In Pompton Plains, Mars County, New Jersey, July the 27th, 1829, and was brought by my parents to New York City the following year. He's one of the controllers. He's going to tell you how New York City didn't have big buildings, uh, which it did. It had, uh, you know, the classic mud flood architecture. New York City has very materially changed in its appearance from those days. Then it was filled with buildings of a character much lower in height than at present. Now it is with buildings of a massive height and 15 to 20 stories filled and occupied with people who were transacting all sorts of business and to remain as okay, long as they may be of use and benefit to my fellow beings and beings. to this. Oops. They didn't think that in 2018 we would start to get wise to them and in 2019 good old UAP would catch them. See, I've taken a look back at the New York architecture and these drawings 
supposedly just plain drawings of the city skyline were proposals. They are supposedly proposals. I call them subproposals. <laughs> um, these buildings were massive. They were too big. Now, why would you do an artist's rendition of a brand new building and have an old, sketchy mud flutter next to it that looks like it's about to be torn down by them? And the foundations of many of these buildings are still to be found in the vicinity of where they were originally found. Probably the whole building or most of the building uh, but the cornerstone, like of that bridge, was moved, and there were tunnels dug, uh, like under the river and elsewhere, that were supposedly never used. Now, why would you go through the expense of digging a tunnel and you never use it? Oh, it's a failed engineering project. Well, uh, that excuse just doesn't fly. Uh, you see an airship at the top of this. I don't know what that is. And then. A Statue of Liberty type thing gleaming. It's the electric electricity electricery. Um, because they don't want you to know that you can just pull energy from the atmosphere and it makes light and sound. And I showed that to you in another video of the palace in Cambodia. It has that in action yet today. And you don't even know about it because you weren't taught about it. You were taught about how the Chicago 1893 World's Fair was built, uh, you know, by this and that architect. And as I showed in a, another video as well, that the architects uh, were frauds, just like these people telling these stories, saying that the buildings had a character that was low and, and they, were, they were occupied by people. Well, in reality, it's because the buildings were tall and they were unoccupied. The, it, the city was found, founded, you know, favors barren. Upon favors, which I can never forget, nor can never repay. Secret society favors. My name is John M. Riley. I was born in Valley Falls, Rhode Island, November the 16th, 1859. I became a fireman in 1881. I have been an engineer for 42 e years. And as this is my last run, I must all bid you goodbye. Goodbye, <laughs> John. That's funny. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, John. This is part of the slave class. The controllers are the ones born before 1850. a good egg because they just had him working except for being a fireman in 1881 that he might have been well, that was probably after a great fire you know after they destroyed the mud flood architecture of some city fee fi o -fum. I smell the blood of a free son <laughs> giants they're tall and how tall? Just ask. They love it. And, by the way, ask them if they play basketball. 1800s Freemasons. They probably knew about the Giants because there were still quite a few of them around. Um, and even in our time, there are some. But, like, the real Giants were, like, 12 feet up to, you know, around 12 feet tall still at that time, the genetic throwbacks. Now look at this picture. See on the left, this cloaked figure? <laughs> that is a massive, massive humanoid there. 
what the heck? And then there's this dinky, like, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Like on the platform waiting to get on a bus or something. Like, what's going on? Now this picture, Martin had this picture. And uh, I noticed these I guys got, are tall. Uh, and tall I know they're Sikhs, when I but... Was, um, early teens. He don't re I lost my little girl. Paul McCartney doesn't first remember when he got his gu first simple, guitar. Early teens. He doesn't even remember how old he was. Oh, I remember how old and, I was. Um, yeah, I made up this little song called I Lost My Little Girl. People asked me whether it was about losing my mother. He doesn't know because he's not Paul McCartney. Which I don't know. Psych psychiatrists might uh, have a field day with that. And others. But um, I certainly didn't think it was at the time. But it could have been. Yes. And, and this was one I, I said to him, well, I got this idea. Like, so we changed it to, you're just 17, you know what I mean which makes more sense, even though you probably don't know what I mean. So we changed it. You've written 300 songs. Do you ever forget a lot of the songs that you've written when you hear them? And yeah. I mean, 300 was just the ones I wrote with John. Since Paul then, wrote I've written with John. lots more. And you do forget them, yeah. And that is my excuse. <laughs> he needs an excuse for forgetting a lot about his life prior to uh, the switch. Well, people everywhere should have free energy sources. Electric power is everywhere. Present in unlimited quantities. You can drive the world's machinery without the need for coal. What is that? Energy and these like energy towers, they look like the um, menorah kind of it's collecting atmospheric energy. Look at that. How would you build that? Carve it out of stone. When I talk about mud floaters, if you don't know, it's like that. <laughs> you wouldn't build windows and doorways under the ground. So this inundation happened and it, it's, it's all over the world. And so these people, you know, in 1850, they had to get rid of like this Roman, Greco-Roman architecture, this kind of, you know, Doric, Greek-style architecture and domed buildings with uh, electrical arcing uh, energy. collectors they had to dismantle all that actually no they didn't And play the mud flood game. Yeah. All right, we're going to play a little game. Where is this? You can't tell, can you? It's Calcutta, India. Where is this? Where do you think this is? Okay, I'll show you. Bombay, India. Is this the top of a skyscraper? Well, yeah, pretty much. It's the state capital in Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines. You wouldn't have guessed. All right, we'll continue this game. Oh, does that, is this the top of a skyscraper? You, oh, no, no, they built that underground if you want to believe all these tales. Oh, there's a top of a skyscraper for sure, right? Or at least a tall building, right? Oh, no. <laughs> no, afraid not. Oh, those are the tops of skyscrapers, right? Hmm. Well, and there's some trees there with that. Oh, no, it's on a sandy beach. That's where they built it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, this photo, what's going on here? The shadows are missing in some places. See, I see one shadow. That pole has a shadow, but the guy in the middle doesn't have a shadow. And then what did they try to hide here? It's like blocked out. 
Well, <laughs> I did some enhancement to on the photo. Stuff that nobody builds today. And then you can see the eaves or the awnings are much lower. Um, this is in the same general area, but just off in some suburb, you know, this church, they, they have the old stone and then they have windows underground, which just never really makes sense. Um, the doorways are just huge. The windows are too high to see out of and they're too big. It's built for giants, I'm telling you. Every city, I mean, look at this doorway. This is in Cleveland. And they have tiny doors. We, we're just tiny. Why would they have this huge archway? Um, and then this little building in Cleveland, this is, uh, they used it in the movie Avengers. Supposed to be in New York City, but it was in Cleveland, actually. But that's like, that looks like that was something straight out of Greece, you know? So, all right, well, hope you enjoyed. I thought it was a good video. Yeah.